Hi, I'm Christine. Today's video features Jonathan Van Ness. Huge thanks to Will R. who left a comment to the Harry Styles video suggesting Jonathan for wearing lots of colors from many seasons. Seasons referring to groups of human natural coloring. There are 12 of them, not meaning times of year. And for giving an impression of warmth in his natural colors. And yet Jonathan shines in bright, cool colors. So that is a wonderful and observant place to start. You may know Jonathan from the Netflix series Queer Eye. I knew him better from a hair product that I purchased at Sephora in Toronto back in June called Air Dry. Any product that I love more every single time I use it is a quality purchase. Let's meet Jonathan. I'm always a little hypnotized by the kindness and the beauty in his face. I think if we did a color analysis, it would take about seven hours. <laughs> Normally it takes about one or one and a half. And uh, I, I would just be so admiring how beautiful this face is. And making this video, it was like meeting someone that I would really like. Anyone who puts the question out there, why do we think the things we do? Why do we wear the things we do? Is someone I'm gonna try to sit beside at dinner. Even better if they don't have an answer or any answer. I've read that he doesn't care which pronouns are used. He answers to all of them, same with me if anybody's asking. And we'll go with he, him, his from his Instagram. Jonathan will also be helping us answer a question that many people have about the color analysis process, which is the influence of facial hair. Should beards be shaved? Should they be left alone? Same with mustaches. And should the color analyst adapt any of the observations or conclusions, decisions, based on the presence of facial hair. Well, what are we gonna say about this white? I think it likes him. I think he likes it back. So here the white, it looks clean, it looks normal, and it looks new, not like a t-shirt you've washed a thousand times. The colors in the skin look healthy and normal. We see enough skin area despite the beard. We see it's evenly colored. We all have reds and greens and purples and yellows, all of them in our skin tones, but we don't want our clothes to make them noticeable or altered or uneven because we perceive skin in health as neutral, whatever the darkness level of surface skin pigmentation happens to be. Also here, light and highlights are in the appropriate places, not random all over the face and they're in normal colors, so they're not catching our eye the way they might, for instance, if they were a very sharp white. Our thinking today is gonna to be centered around this question. If this white is true with Jonathan's colors, what other colors would also be true? The hair here, this looks beautiful lying on the shirt, is so well defined. We see all the shapes and all the curves and we see the dimensionality, the depth in the hair. You'd wear the hair color in the white in an outfit, that would be fantastic. Color of the beard makes sense with the eyebrows. The beard is the same color throughout. If the color being worn under the face is too dark or too cool or both, it can put a spot of darkness right here under the chin. It can be very localized or it can spread across the entire jawline. It happens with or without beards. And it gives an unevenly colored impression. It may add age, it may add a look of severity. Even from a distance, the white lights up his teeth beautiful skin color, neutral and normal, without looking pale or papery or oily. The facial hair creates this gorgeous contrast. It's not distracting at all. Even the color of the skin on the arms, it looks normal and great lying next to the shirt. And normal is great because what's the other choice? Not normal. <laughs> you don't want your skin to look off somehow. Same with the hands on the jeans. They look normal. You can see them very clearly. You can see the shapes and you can see the colors. Those jeans are a good color too. They're dark enough, blue enough, to take part in the presentation when he walks into the room. Sometimes background colors in pictures suit people better than what they're wearing. Not here. The background is complicated. There's light bouncing everywhere and you can look at him or you can look at the background, but you can't really look at both at the same time. Like physical work for the eyes to try to separate them. And the effect would be similar if he wears those colors and reflectivity. You can look at one or the other. You can't really look at both. 
it's hard to know why they're together. I ask myself, what did the stylist see? Why did they take this off a hanger? I don't see how either looks better by putting them together. The textile seems wet, uh, slick, oily maybe, whereas he doesn't reflect light in that way. So there's a sense of the person in the clothing not being cut from the same cloth. The visual effect that we want is the body supporting the head. You'd think a shiny body would hold up any head, but when you keep your gaze on his face, I have very little awareness of anything else, maybe the white lettering behind him. Not really registering that background color. He is just so much more colored than what he's wearing. And if we look at the person and ignore the shine in the clothing, the skin tone appears flushed maybe or red. The clothing might be doing that, but I don't know how it would. Or it might be that his own reds seem too strong because the clothing is not meeting them and balancing them. Back to the jeans and the sweater, pretty good. He looks present, he looks grounded in the colors he's wearing. We see the body supporting the head, they're convincing together, they're part of the same story. Great, gorgeous color in the jeans. They don't need to be any more blue. We talked about that in the last video about blue jeans, but they're entirely reasonable. And the softer blue jeans that we just saw with the white t-shirt, maybe those two colors would bracket his color range for good jeans. The sweater, the boot, if they're not his color home, they're probably close. You can see tones like the boots in the hair colors. Plenty of color in the complexion. It's not pale or dry looks strong and real. This may be entirely photographic, but I would be looking for a bit less orange red flush in the skin tones. Along the sides of the nose, maybe there's an appearance of eyeshadow at the temples. We see it in the natural hair tones and it probably is in the skin tones, but we shouldn't register it. It shouldn't be noticeable. We're looking for skin color in health to be almost under our radar. Well, what would happen if we took the color of the boots and put it in a larger area right next to the face? A lot of good things happening here. The sculpted, fine sculpted geometry of the face that we saw in the white t-shirt is back. I think that's one of the qualities that make him so beautiful. There were similar colors in the hair, the skin tones and the sweater. Creates a sense of belonging, like they're from similar worlds. So that's calm and organized to look at. Without facial hair though, do you think he might blend into that sweater? Are the skin tones a little too orangey, most noticeable at the temples, the sides of the nose, impression of eyeshadow, even the lip color doesn't appear quite fresh. Maybe it's a little heavier brownish. Would be good to see more separation, more definition of the person by the clothes rather than a sense of them kind of blending into one uh, single shape. How would you know if the sweater were doing that, over warming the skin to the point that he's becoming the color that he's wearing? Well, step one is make the light full spectrum because this could be candlelight. We don't know that. Once that's figured out, next step, try a cooler sweater. Let's say we move from whiskey to sherry, redder, but not darker, and then see if we get more separation and it clears those warm colors, the warm tones from the skin. The hands, maybe showing the same effect of blending or becoming the sweater color, you can get a sense of how color works with you just by floating or with your colors, by just floating your hand about an inch above it. Get used to what that looks like on color that you know is good for you. Thinking about the shapes, look at how well defined the edges are, get a sense of how well can you see these things. You want them to be better together. That's always what we're after, not harder to see because they're together. And it can be a really useful thing. I do this in stores and I think people around me think it's an energy thing, <laughs> but I'm really just looking at the, how the hand looks next to that color of clothing because I either don't want to try it on or I'm not allowed to try it on. You gotta be careful of two things in pictures. One is background colors, because if there were three different backgrounds, we would have three different comments. Smaller area of warmth, the whiskey and the mustard, now a smaller color. So the skin tones have lost the orange cast, good. Eyes and lip colors are visible, good. What was better in the last one though, the sweater, is that shapes came to a point. The nose, the cheekbones were drawn with a fine pencil rather than let's say a wide tip marker. 
when a light strikes any object, there is the place where the light strikes directly, that's the true color. Then there is the highlight, the lighter side, and the darker side, that's the shadow side. The color of the highlight and the shadow depend on what the original color was. Same with humans. There are natural colors of highlights and shadows that go along with the natural colors of the original face. And if the color that's being worn can't achieve those highlights and shadows, then the face appears flatter, underdefined. We lose our information about depth and dimension. And so here, the we don't have enough light to dark distance in the angles. The shapes appear flattened or rounded. There's less dimensionality around the eyes. The cheekbones appear lower and flatter, and the tip of the nose looks rounder than it is. Sometimes we wear clothes for the clothes to get the attention, and the meaning is clear, and, and that's good. This color's okay. The icy grays it have continuity with the natural skin tones. They're not changing or distorting them in any way. But the way the light moves across this surface is not helping us make sense of what we see. It, there's um, a faster tempo, a higher pitch than would be true for this person. His light, I think it's quieter, it's steadier. He's more 3D. The blouse is flatter than he is in how it reflects light. Let's say his shadows are deeper and darker and the blouse is not able to meet those. In fact, the way he reflects light in his its shape, in his shadows, much closer to the pants and the shoes. This person just doesn't have that high shine iridescence of the sequins. Nobody mirrors it exactly. It's a completely synthetic effect. But in the nature of their colors, some people do reflect light in a similar way. But we're not talking about someone. We're not talking about anyone. We're thinking about Jonathan. At the start, we said about the white, if this is true in this world, what else could be true? Well, this black is true. It's basic matte black, but is very present, is very active. It's not just there. It's saying great things for and about him. The varying textures adds the right kind of detail in this landscape. Light moves across it better, more close to how it moves across him compared with the sequin blouse. The background's dark, but he's visible. He's normal. He's healthy. He's separating in front of it. Skin tones around the eyes, same color as the rest of the face. There's no odd eye shadows. Nose is the same colors as the rest of the face with normal shadowing along the sides. Fresh lip color, nothing heavy or muddy feeling here. I prefer this to the whiskey sweater, which did give us nice shapes, but the colors were too warm and they were competing with his. Also good continuity here from beard, lashes, hair. There's this natural eyeliner effect that's just gorgeous. Look at the areas of white in the face. They're clean in color. They're the right size in focus so that the shapes can be sculpted and fine. You see the slender highlight down the front of the nose creates a narrow bridge and a focused tip because when the highlight is too wide for the person, it's disorienting. It flattens the image. Like picture a branch after an ice storm with the sun shining on it and the whole thing is a highlight rather than having highlight along an edge which is how light behaves gives us information about shape and depth is the same thing when hair highlights are too wide like you see patches or stripes loses the effect of sparkle because it blunts the way that light reflects off of an edge the edges of the hair the edges of the branch so we lose the depth and dimensionality of highlights. Here, it's perfect. You see where light strikes, like the cheekbone. Color is natural, normal. Then there's a lighter side and a darker one. And together, they create an angle, an edge. Compared with the last black, this color is not meeting or supporting him as well. I'm less aware of it being there. High shine, super smooth. It just can look plastic, even without the sequins. Light is just moving too much and the whole thing is too flat. At least black keeps the skin tones reasonable in color, but we've, we're losing definition. The architecture of the face is blurring. The cheekbones appear low and flat. The tip of the nose is wider, less defined, so the effect is less refined than what Jonathan's facial features are capable of. The color band is more present but it's kind of lost in the shine of the shirt. Might be more effective if they weren't both shiny, because now they both look kind of plastic. Similar facial shapes actually to what we saw in the beige coat with the striped shirt. 
Two wide shadows. Our mind can't figure out where a shape begins and ends. Where, where does the nose end and the face begin? It's like the circle can't close. There's not enough shadow to close the shape. And the sensation is of something that looks incomplete. The eyelashes are harder to see here than in the last one. Beard seems even a little thinner. Maybe it is, but it's less rich and luxuriant, less evenly colored. When the hair looks thinner or less pigmented, it gives an impression of age. To answer the question of whether facial hair affects color analysis, it actually has very little effect. As long as there's enough skin area to be able to see colors changing and the features are visible, the lips and the nose, there's a lot of hair covering the lips and the hair grows high on the cheekbones, plus the person maybe wears glasses, I'd ask that the beard be trimmed back. Not shaved, not necessary at all. Hair gives very useful information in the way it reacts to color. And I like it when people participate in their own color analysis. They can see what's going on when they know what to look for. And I find that men can really relate to the color of hair in um, hair on their head and hair on, in beards, and they care more <laughs> about that than they might eyelashes or shadows, which is something that women perceive very well. Jonathan was the first non-female star in 35 years on the cover of Cosmo UK. And I can see him. Well, correction, I can see his head. I see the black and white print on the page, but I don't see the rest very well, which may be the intention with the cover of a magazine. He separates from the background, but the dress doesn't, and so you, the fonts become more legible. There may be a similar orange in him, and therefore in his color palette. Say the very light yellow peach tones that he could wear as an accent, which would be beautiful with forest green or with midnight blue. But I don't see it as effective for him in a huge area. His arm lying against the dress is hard to see. It's kind of like that whiskey sweater. Something resonates with him, but there's just too much area and it's too warm. I've said in our videos before that once you have your colors, your color palette, wear them however you want. True and not true. Wear them based on how you want to look. But what brings out the magic of color is other colors and factor yourself very much into that equation. It's kind of like words in that way. They're more meaningful when they're combined in certain ways. The person who would wear this color in this area and be very complete where it would be enough to define them really beautifully. Might be a spring of some sort in their natural colors. I don't think that he is. People also ask, what do bright colors look like in wool or matte fabric textures? Like this. You can definitely get very high brightness in mattifying textiles. The pink here, I think it's brighter than him. I'm more aware of it than I want to be. Not by a lot, by a little but I do find it less complicated to look at in a larger area than I did with the peach, the one that we just saw. He looks so real. It's like he's sitting beside you. There's no sense of fade, no sense of blur. Skin texture, smooth, moist, well colored. Teeth, lip colors are great, so the warmth level's okay. Probably the cool side of neutral, the sweater. Darkness level is fine. The nose, the cheekbones, the temples, they all come to a focus. There's no sense of flat or round or blurring. The color is very noticeable. You'd be very aware of it sitting across the table. Your, our clothing should be under us and behind us a little bit, but I am finding this very bright. The pink is glowing back up into the face. Brightness is an independent color property from warmth or from the light to dark range. Meaning the warmth of this pink might be perfect for him. It might be neutral, neutral to the cool side, but it's the brightness that's too high. Maybe he has medium neutral warmth and maybe he has medium neutral brightness. And it's something else that goes higher or lower on the, in the range. Well, there's only one thing, one other color property left, which is the light to dark range. And the white and black, which are the extremes of light to dark, that's looked pretty good. I see what Will says about Jonathan looking warm, but winter colored people, I think he probably is a winter, can look warmer than they are because the colors in the skin are quite saturated. They're quite intensely pigmented. And so 
a little bit of warmth can give us a perception that things are warmer than they are. And that's not just a winter thing. People with a natural smokiness in the skin tone, people with a natural suntan kind of effect, these people can all look warm, but when you actually test or analyze their coloring, it's not that warm at all. His skin seems a little coppery. You see it in these beautiful freckles. You see it in the natural hair tones. And so maybe he has a touch of autumn in his colors. He really has a beautiful face. I look in these eyes and sense someone who has a clue what it might be like to stand in someone else's shoes, which is very special. N not a color-related comment, except maybe it is because we see Jonathan so well. He feels very available to us. Good first impression. I see him well. He's not behind a screen. He looks healthy. Colors, shapes, normal, consistent, believable, everything fine. The textile is very matte. It's giving me a bit of a blanket effect. Not just because of the style, it's the color. I think he goes up from here, meaning he needs more pigment to create a bit more of a jewel tone to meet his natural colors. It's dark enough, not too dark, because he's not making it look darker than it is. It just needs to be more green. On someone, this would be plenty green. Next to Jonathan, it reads softer, grayer. I think it doesn't show him as glamorous as he is. The sparkly sock boots, those are good. <laughs> they, <laughs> they'd be good jewelry, like jeweled gravel. I bet he'd wear colors like that near the face as well. I mean, less wet and floppy looking than smooth shine. Could be great as a narrow stripe in, in a piece of clothing. Could be great as an accessory. Could even be a really good eyeshadow. My first step in making these videos is to try to get a sense of the whole person. So I watch YouTube videos and I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description box, along with my favorite video from GQ, which is where this picture comes from. Because I find what's missing from appearance information, clothes, cosmetics, hair, is truth. <laughs> Jonathan is so common sense. He's very funny. He is very spontaneous. He's very real and he's a little quirky in the best way. I, you really can see why they cast him for Queer Eye. His myths and facts about hair care, I mean, he's actually honest. Like when he says, think twice about coloring your hair because it will cost a lot of time and a lot of money to grow out. The green, it's dialed way up. It's too green, like the pink sweater. It's climbing up his face rather than staying under his face. And with this color, that's probably part of the intention. If you have a color fan, a color palette, if you know your season, fan it all the way out and then lay it on a piece of fabric. That palette, that's your face, all those colors together at the same time. And you want to be able to keep the fabric color under your face. So if you feel like it's climbing up between the arms, uh, it may be a little bit too bright. They should look like they can lock together, but not one in excess of the other. So he has a brightness boundary, after which color eclipses the person. We stop seeing him better at some point, and we cross this line where he becomes harder to see. This is a great green, because he is what we see. His colors can keep the green under his face. We're aware of it, we're just not too aware of it, and yet he's very much enhanced. The shapes are in focus, the beard is evenly colored and luxurious, teeth, lips, beautiful. There is some shine in this fabric, but it breaks up into light and dark and is much more effective for him. This is the cover of Jonathan's book, came out in April 2022. Such a nice cover. All good colors working for him and with him. The white, the pink, the green, the black, the blue. The skirt could be bluer, could be a little more sapphire to balance the black and him. But this is the right kind of blue. It's not candy or tropical blue. And given the size of the area and where we want the focus to be in the cover of a book, I'd have chosen this blue for this situation too. It has good reflectivity. Light and dark move well through it. Every color is doing its job. My attention is divided evenly between the person, the words. I'm never taken out of the story. I actually find it harder to look away than to keep looking. He's visible. The picture looks well framed, super interesting to move your eyes around. You notice colors and textures and depth and contrast. Building up your color wardrobe, it's exhilarating. It's like travel. You take this series of tiny risks, venturing into new territory, 
seeing what kind of new boundaries you have to work within. And also you discover these new freedoms that they bring and those become a series of tiny rewards. Make your progress gradual and planned. We can get very caught up behind the latest product, a latest set of rules that's going to be the answer to all of our questions. And the people already on board can be very motivated to guard or protect those ideas, but it brings a kind of rigidity with it. So keep asking questions as your hair color changes, as your relationship status changes, as your life stage changes. And if you feel yourself building up a head of emotional steam behind the latest silver bullet, just pause and plan your next step a little bit more carefully. Take those little risks. Expect that you're going to have certain impulses that are going to pay off and some that won't, but that's just a normal part of learning and growth. Thank you to Jonathan for being our model for today and sincere thanks to Will for suggesting this beautiful person. I love people who live and let live and leave others better than they found them. I aspire very much to being that way myself and I love it when they can look as beautiful on the outside as they are on the inside. Thank you for being here today. I look forward so much to seeing you in our next video. Mm -hmm.